friends, it's Trisha behind the camera here, and I wanted to come on and show you some of the changes from the class that we did last night. And I put there in the bottom uh, just a reminder about the pricing that I put up on GoFindYourHappy.com. I will be taking it down. I said I was taking it down at 7.30, but since I'm changing the color palette, um, I'm going to expand that for, I don't know, a couple hours or so. But anyways, I was playing around with the colors from last night, and I decided to um, change it up a little bit, and pretty excited about how it's coming together. This is a, a light turquoise here, and this is a royal blue. And I thought by having a darker color against this butterfly that it might um, not pop. But what I'm going to do is in the veins of the butterfly, I'm going to do, uh, I believe, a white ink uh, pen in here. And then I'm going to do a burst of oranges and yellows, which I believe is going to complement this royal blue, just really pretty. So I thought I'd come on a few minutes and let you know, just in case you decide to order the, the barn quilt with the paint kit, you'll be able to see what colors I'm putting together. So this is uh, gray, this is light turquoise, this is white, and this is royal blue. And um, it's just feeling really, really good. I'm, I'm really enjoying how this color is coming together. And I won't finish it tonight. I'll finish it over the weekend. Um, so I'll, I may process on that and decide to keep the pricing discount up for you guys until I have the remaining part of the colors. So that way, if you want to get a paint kit, you kind of know the finished there. Um, also, shipping is so sad. Shipping is going away um, tomorrow night. And I don't know when it will be coming back. So um, if there's something that you're thinking about getting and you've been waiting for a while, um, because I have people who will email me and say, are you doing free shipping anytime soon? Because I want to place an order. I'm just letting you know, free shipping goes bye-bye tomorrow night. So it's just hard to keep it up for an unlimited amount of time. But anyways, I hope you you love these new colors. If you were on last night, um, tell me what you think. I'm going to go and put the chat on and share with me where you're listening from. You may see me more on tomorrow because I'm in North Carolina and we are supposed to get like so much rain tomorrow. It's supposed to pour 100% chance up to an inch of Rain, so I may be doing either writing or painting. I haven't decided what my heart will call me to do or do both. But I figured I'd come on for just a few minutes and show you this. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to show you. Let me see if I can show you my white pen concept here, okay? So the horse and the bear, I did a black in these lines. These are intentional double lines that are in here. And um, I am actually, let me just change my camera here real quick so you can see the real detail of this, okay? Because it's kind of cool. Just change this. Here we go. And of course, it's upside down because now we're on my other camera here. I don't have my big studio lights on because I was planning on just coming down here for a few minutes, but then I decided to go live. All right, so there we go. Um, this is a Uniball, white Uniball ink pen, and I really have fallen in love with this pen. I just love it. It gets into these grooves really, really nice. And usually um, I'll go 
in the white here and then I'll paint. Sometimes I'll go ahead and paint and then go over with the white. But since I'm showing you live right now, I'm just showing you how the white's going to come in. Now, if you don't like, if you love the butterfly and don't want to do this intense, um, I am going to turn on the studio light, that detail look and you're like, man, I don't like doing that detailing. Just cover color one color over the whole butterfly, okay? And make it a silhouette. Um, you don't have to do um, all of those colors with different colors, okay? You don't, I mean, I just made it for you like that so you can have fun if you want to change it up, okay? So here we go. So now you're seeing the white come through here. The wood etching is just so beautiful even on its own. It's just so pretty. I do have this butterfly here, a little bit in white so you can see. And I did find a link of these unibulbs instead of buying them individually. Um, I have a link that I'll post up in a little bit of these white pens that are cheaper by the bundle. That's not a lot, like, but um, I found the best price place for them. So anyways, that's where you can start seeing the, the white end. Now, from a distance, like as a barn quilt, you won't, like, from a very big distance, you might not see the detailing. But what I love is when we do home decor, that if this is, let's say, above your fireplace or on your front porch or something of that nature, this is just really, really pretty. I am going to work on another barn quilt. If you love butterflies, I believe I'm going to do one that's a very big butterfly instead of a smaller one here. Um, but I do love this one. It's just... The focus is on the barn quilt itself, and the size of this butterfly is almost like an embellishment. I mean, it's not like that small as an embellishment. I mean, you can see it's the size of my hand, right? But in comparison to the, um, let me just show you here. In comparison to the horse or the hummingbird, you can see, see how much larger this horse is in comparison to this butterfly. So that's why I went into, this was my first mock-up of the butterfly. And um, once I printed it out, I was like, oh, you know what? I think the next round I'll do a little bit of a larger one. But I already have people interested in this one. So I think it just is going to be personal preference. If you like the smaller size um, barn quilts like I have, like the garden flags, I think this design's awesome for the garden flag or by your mailbox, you know, because it's just a real pretty. And then the butterfly would be on both sides, just so you know. What do you think of the royal blue? Do you like it? I'm really liking it. I think it's going to be really cool. And like I said, what I'll do is that ripe apricot that I did last night on the outside here. I'm going to go and change the camera back. Um, that ripe apricot that I did around the outside, I'm going to bring that back in and bring it into the actual uh, body of the butterfly. So let me just show you that real quick. So. You can get an idea of how that's going to feel. And when I send out these kits with the paint kits, I send a flat brush that I use with barn quilts and I send a detailed brush. So that way you can do the detail work. Oh yeah, that's going to be so pretty. Let me 
makes me wonder, you know, I did say that I was going to do the white in here, but I might try the black too and just kind of see which one I like the best. Or I might just, I might change them up. I've got paint on my hands tonight. Sorry about that. I've been working all, working all evening. Let's just see what this black looks like here. So those that jumped off are going to miss the little the little tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the veins here in black. And then to give it a dimension around the blue, I'm going to do a bright color outlining the whole butterfly. Yeah, now I'm pretty excited about this. I'm a huge butterfly fan. Kurt's probably wondering where I went because we were watching Survivor, but then he started snoring in the reclining chair after mowing the lawn. So I was like, well, if he's going to sleep, I might as well pop down to the cottage for a little bit because if it's going to pour tomorrow, I may not feel like getting out completely in the rain. Who knows? Oh, yeah, I love that. Look at that, you guys, with the black. Now, the, the royal blue, of course, is not finished. It's not, you know, I mean, you can see the boldness of the blue here versus here because I was just kind of playing with the royal blue. But I love it now because now we have the look of the eight-pointed star in the middle with the royal blue. And I do love the black lines here that we're doing with that, that pen. And I'm doing a gel pen, a permanent gel pen. I love gel pens. I also like Bic Intensity permanent markers. You know, Sharpies get all the, the rage too. But I tried Bic Intensities and I really like them as well. But as far as like my mixed media work um, and just, I will say just overall artwork, I really love gel pens. Love the smoothness of them. They just... I don't know. Using them just relaxes me. Oh, that's so pretty. So that's what I'll do is I'm going to do the black on the inside, then I'll do the different colors, and then I'm going to go around and do almost like a 3D feel around this royal blue. Since I, I already have the royal blue on my um, plate here. There's no reason to waste it. So I'm going to go ahead and color, well, I'll color this, paint this. Painting is a form of coloring, isn't it? You know, when I tell people, like, I don't know if it's my own personal perspective, but if I have it, then I'm sure other people have it. You know, coloring is so much more than just um, something that you do at one age in your life or whatever. Um, I belong to a private coloring book group. And oh my goodness sakes, I mean... Ugh. Seriously, y'all, I am just like, I mean, here I create coloring books and I'm just, I am blown away by the artistry 
of shading and real life depicting it. It's, it's unbelievable. I tell you what, it puts perspective of what I've learned and I'm like, man, I need to continue to still practice. Speaking of that, though, while you're while you're watching this, let me show you what, what I did with in a private group. Um, I taught a class, a mixed media challenge class. Look at this. This was a coloring page. And we did um, it's still not done because I doing the colors and stuff, gel pens. But this is actually 3D. This is modeling paste. And I taught them how to color the modeling paste and use stencils and then do patterns on the background. So if you think that that is really cool, then um, definitely let me know. I'd love to hear your comments on that. And um, you can turn it into artwork, which is amazing. And I sell that artwork quite a bit. So it's fun to teach other people ideas. And I was, chatting with one of my friends today who's in um, the Happy Tribe group with me. And she says, you know what I love about the barn quilts is that you can take different types of art and do inside of it. So for example, if you wanted to collage and do papers in certain sections, or you wanted to do fabric over certain areas, you could and uh, bring it into an art form for interior, not just exterior. So it's geometric art. You know, the word barn quilt came from a lady in Ohio wanting to honor her mom who was a quilter. So she was like, wow, I love the quilts my mom makes. I'm going to paint. I'm going to do a depiction of one of the quilts of my mom's. And she hung it on her barn in Ohio and she named it a barn quilt and that's really how it got started as far as that verbiage that wording but when you do the history um, of the bar of aka the barn quilt um, quilt painting was done through the years, during the Underground Railroad, they would actually paint signs like this, patterns. And um, there was an article about, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie on Harriet Tubman. Boy, so inspiring. And what an amazing lady. But how basically they would get um, from one place to another and be able to travel and have their life, you know, spared. And basically, people would help them stay or hide over their traveling on foot. So they would come up with signs that had certain patterns on them. So if you decide, if you feel like, like while you're laying in bed and you want to Google something, do Underground Railroad. Uh, quilt patterns and you'll see like uh, Civil War patterns and all of that. So geometric art goes back a long, long way. That's pretty fascinating. And I have a feeling that not even just the Civil War and the, the paintings like that, you know, I wish there was somebody that I could interview because my family's from West Virginia in the Appalachia area mountains. And I know that they painted more than just landscapes. I'm sure they painted quilt patterns and things like that. The lady that came up with the word barn quilt, she that was just a very creative way she named what she was doing to honor her mom. And now these barn quilt trails are all over, not just the United States, but in Canada. And it's just pretty fascinating. I 
I love studying the history of Well, I just like studying in general. I mean, I really do. Uh, like I, I'm a mixed media artist, right? And when I was doing it, I didn't even know to name myself mixed media, right? And you think, oh, mixed media is like um, recent. Well, actually, Picasso was one of the first documented mixed media artists. So. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that is. I love it. I love it. Okay, well, I've, only, I've been on for 20 minutes. I'm going to sign off and spend time with my family. I'm going to keep the pricing up for just a little bit. I don't know if I'll change it tonight or if I'll change it tomorrow, but it's a crazy good discount and free shipping so if you're wanting to order one and try it this is your time to do so okay my friends all right well god bless you y'all mean a lot to me love you bunches okay all right talk to you later bye